today's video we'll be looking at the Tandy 1000 SX. This is the Tandy 1000 SX. By many, it's thought of as possibly the best uh, bang for your buck in the 1980s. Uh, if you wanted to get a PC in the 80s, it could be that this was your best bet. Several years ago, I did have in my possession a uh, Tandy 1000, the original model. I believe I had the A. There was, there was the original, and then I believe there was a slight revision uh, called the Tandy Model A, or the Tandy A. Um, I know I had the A model. I also had a Tandy 1000 uh, HD with the hard drive. Unfortunately, um, I didn't have this channel at the time. So I never did videos on those computers, and they're long gone. Because of my limited space, uh, I, I have to get rid of uh, machines sometimes. And unfortunately, I did get rid of those machines before I started this uh, channel. But if you do want to learn a little bit about them, uh, you can go to my blog. Uh, and uh, you can check them out. I did at least have the blog going on at the time, so I did get to do blog articles uh, on those machines. Although, their earlier blog articles, not so detailed as my later ones, but eh, I'm still glad I got to do something. But all that time, actually, this was the model that I was going for. This is the Tandy 1000 SX. Uh, I actually drove about two hours to pick this machine up. I'm not usually big on that. I read a lot about collectors and uh, people that are into retro computers and video game anything like that and it seems to be pretty common practice that they'll drive hours and hours out of the way to pick stuff up uh, I generally <laughs> I'm terrible with that like if something is like 15 if it's not if it's more than 15 minutes away I'm usually like ah uh, you know like my friends like oh this cool rare are you gonna get it and I'm like oh, I don't know is it is it like on the corner where I live because I, I I'm not driving across town pick that up. It's like, what's wrong with you? Um, but yeah, it's I, I don't know, maybe that comes with getting older. You just don't want to be driving all across creation. But this machine did pop up about uh, two hours away from me. And so yeah, I, I made a little bit of a trip to go pick this guy up. And I'm glad I did. It's actually in pretty good condition. Um, this is the second SX I have, but the other one is in storage on the other side of the country. And I, I really wanted to have an SX. So why is the SX uh, such a cool machine? Why is it thought of by a lot of people that are into retro computers to be one of the best machines you could have bought in the 80s? Uh, why would you get so much bang for your buck? And we're going to, to talk about that. So the Tandy 1000 line, I'll, I'll go over a brief history of Tandy 1000 line before I talk about this specific machine. Um, but we, we've talked about a couple of those on the channel before, at least one. I know we talked about the Tandy 1000 RL, uh, which was a later, slimmer version. Um, this was one of the earlier versions. I believe this came out in 1987. Uh, I'll double check that. If I'm wrong, you'll uh, see a correction probably about here. Uh, but I think it was 1987 this thing came out. And it's actually based on the PC Junior. Uh, all the Tandy 1000 line was originally based on the PC Junior. Uh, it has extend extended video modes. Um, it ended up becoming called Tandy graphics adapter, although it was originally uh, kind of for the IBM PC. It's kind of like EGA. Uh, we'll see a little bit of that. But basically, Tandy sort of outdid IBM. They made a better PC Junior than IBM did, um, and it just kind of became the Tandy 1000 line. And that original machine was the Tandy 1000, and then uh, there is the Tandy 1000 HD, which is basically just a Tandy 1000 with a factory hard drive. Uh, but this came out a little bit later. This is the SX and basically it fixes everything wrong with the Tandy 1000. And it's a really cool sort of PC class machine. And we're gonna take a look at it real quick. We're gonna open it up uh, and everything. So this should be a really cool video. And we're gonna do a lot of upgrades. I have a lot of upgrades uh, I wanna do with this guy. All right, just starting right here, we have the Tandy 1000 Personal Computer SX badge and right here we have two drive bays it came stock with two uh, 360k uh, five and a quarter inch 
floppy drives which we have installed here. Uh, I am going to do a little bit of an upgrade later hopefully uh, to add a 720k drive. Uh, now if you look right here there's a little bit of a indent right here and you can see the big red button that's the reset button very big and accessible and next to that is the keyboard port um, let's get a better look at that and then right there next to our reset button we do have the keyboard port and unfortunately it, you cannot use a standard um, PC keyboard you do need to use a Tandy keyboard um, and next to that we have two joystick ports these are kind of holdovers from Tandy's uh, TRS-80 line, uh, so they are compatible with TRS-80 joysticks. And there's a nice little grill there, uh, though you got to watch out because sometimes dust uh, will get in there and you'll have some issues. Um, there's a screw right there and a screw right there, and those are the only screws you actually have to take out and then the uh, top cover comes off. But before we do that, let's take a look at the keyboard and then let's uh, turn this thing around and take a look. Alright, so here's our Tandy keyboard uh, on this bed, so it's probably a little uh, slanted there, the image. Sorry, and it's sitting on top of this IBM AT, but here is the Tandy keyboard that came with the SX. Although there used to be a little uh, little paper right here, I believe a little insert that, that said what some of the special functions uh, were, because this machine does have a turbo function, um, and there's no turbo button, it's from a keyboard command fairly standard looking uh, keyboard here uh, fairly standard looking keyboard here this one's in pretty decent shape uh, it's not missing any keys it's not very yellowed either I have another one where these keys are like extremely yellowed and uh, this one is actually in pretty good shape um, this is the one I actually got with this S SX the other one that's pretty yellowed uh, I actually got from one of the other Tandy 1000s, which I don't have anymore. Uh, let me grab that one real quick, just for a comparison. Alright, and here's the other one I have, which you can see the keys are uh, extremely yellowed on this one. Uh, it's also really dusty. I need to clean this guy off. Maybe do some retro brighting on it, maybe. But, yeah, big difference in uh, yellowing there. <laughs> Okay, and real quick before I do any upgrades, I just want to show you guys this machine uh, booting up uh, as it is in its pretty original form here. Uh, so in the A drive, uh, I do have uh, the OS on floppy. I believe it's it's like Tandy MS-DOS. It's sort of an OEM Tandy version of MS-DOS uh, version 3.2, uh, I believe. So let me turn this monitor on here. And then we'll uh, power up the machine and you'll see it boot up and uh, load from that disk real quick. And then we'll uh, go on to our upgrades that I'm planning to do with this guy. So, there we go. Memory size, 384K. It is pretty loud. I don't know if you could hear it through the not so great speakers on this camera. But yeah, it's, it, the fan and everything in there, it is pretty loud. And there we go, uh, BIOS ROM, Tandy Corporation, there we go, Tandy version 3.20, licensed to Tandy Corp, and then it should just load up. And there we go. And it looks like it tried to clock get.exe. It looks like it tried to run something there. Um, that might just be, you know, like the, 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 the t clock. I'm not quite sure what clock get is. It might just be the time. Uh, but. Uh oh. This keyboard is not responding. So that's not good. So hold on. Alright, well that's a bit unfortunate. Uh, it looks like the nice clean keyboard, uh, which I know worked last time I used it, uh, doesn't seem to be working, but the yellowed keyboard uh, is currently working. So um, I might also have to take that one apart and just clean it out and see if there's something simple going on. Um, 
But as for right now, good thing I have a spare keyboard that seems to be working fine. So let's move on. All right, and here we have the machine turned around. And um, you can see Tandy 1000 SX, personal computer. Pretty large fan right there. That's with the power supply. Uh, standard three-prong connector right there. We don't have a second one uh, for a monitor to plug into like we do with the IBM PC. All right, so starting right there, we have a printer connector. Uh, although it's not the standard one you're used to seeing, it's more like a edge connector. And then next to that we have a light pen port for, well, connecting a light pen. And then right here we have a color monitor uh, port. Uh, this will connect to a uh, RGB monitor. And it can the Tandy 1000 SX is capable of displaying both CGA and TGA, which is uh, Tandy Graphics Adapter. Uh, which was originally kind of the mode that the PC Junior used. And I guess the uh, best way to describe it is sort of like, it's kind of like lower resolution EGA, and uh, you can just use a CGA monitor, and a CGA monitor will display the 16 colors uh, from TGA. But it really more or less just kind of looks like uh, EGA 16 colors. Lots of games supported it, um, especially like Sierra games, adventure games. It had a lot of support back in the day. Now next to the monitor port we have two RCA jacks. Uh, these are just standard RCA jacks and at glance you might just think it is stereo audio. Uh, but actually if you take a look at the labeling, uh, the first one is uh, composite video and then the second one is your audio. So you can hook this machine up to like a standard uh, TV or monitor uh, if it has a composite input. Now I believe the composite video that the Tandy 1000 puts out is slightly different than kind of the IBM standard uh, for composite video output. Uh, so most games should look pretty normal, uh, but there might be a few instances with a few games that might look a little bit off color-wise, um, and maybe even in graphical, maybe. Um, I believe uh, there's a website, Nerdly Pleasures, that had a pretty good article uh, on the differences with the uh, Tandy composite output and kind of standard IBM composite output. Uh, not a hundred percent sure on that, but I believe there is a slight difference. And then if we look over to the right a little bit more, we have one, two, three, four, five standard expansion ports. And right now, my, only one of mine is occupied right there uh, by a serial uh, card and with a big hole in it. <laughs> so that card came uh, pre-installed in my machine. Okay, so here we go with the case. Uh, cover taken off and the first thing you really notice is this giant PC speaker uh, right here. It, it's pretty good. It puts out pretty decent sound. Um, now I can't give you the technical specs but one of the cool things about the Tandy 1000 line and the Tandy 1000 SX is the PC speaker it's a little bit different than the IBM PC speaker. The sound that comes out of this thing uh, is a little bit better. So what comes out of here is it has uh, three voices and one sound channel that comes out of the Tandy uh, speaker sound. And uh, a lot of games actually support it. And uh, there are some games that don't uh, support a sound card, uh, but they do support PC speaker. And I don't know what you want to call it, Tandy sound or Tandy uh, PC speaker. And you really want to go with the Tandy PC speaker because it's going to sound a good bit better than just your standard uh, PC speaker. And that was one of the capabilities that the Tandy 1000 line had over a lot of other computers from the era. Just sort of uh, superior sound and uh, video uh, than your standard, you know, CGA PC speaker, IBM compatible PC. Um, so like a game, I think like a good example is Thexter. Uh, is a pretty popular game. And uh, it supported the Tandy 3 channel sound. And I believe that might be the best sound that that game has. I don't believe that game supports any sound cards. So uh, that's going to be the best you're going to hear is from a, a Tandy 1000 uh, PC speaker. And yes, I am aware there are devices that allow the Tandy 3 channel sound on regular PCs. But that is well beyond the scope of this uh, video. So coming up here looking, we've got our drive. Uh, this is a big bay. I haven't taken it out yet. And we have this metal, like I guess, support bar uh, right here. And if you can see down there, these are all just 8-bit ISA slots. They're standard ISA. There's nothing special about them on the Tandy 1000 SX. You get one, two, three, four, five, just like the regular IBM PC. Um, 
let's see some other notable things and then right here is our CPU um, now this is I guess you could consider this like a turbo XT uh, since the CPU does run at 7.16 megahertz uh, although with the keyboard command you can down clock it back down to uh, 4.77 megahertz uh, compatibility mode for some of those older games that just demand 4.77 megahertz um, next to it we have a slot for a coprocessor an 8087 uh, that is one of the upgrades we are definitely going to do I have one of those um, various chips for various things not sure what a lot of these do um, this one right here um, might be for the video chip and this may I don't know I'm not I'm not sure I, I'll have to look that up we have this really tall chip uh, right here um, now right here I believe this is your volume control for the speaker uh, a lot of later models have a little volume knob on the outside that you can get to it's a little inconvenient that you have to open the case up uh, if you want to change the volume to the speaker but at least there's an option to do it um, now one thing you might notice right off is these empty chips here and if you look back there you see these sockets are filled so this is the system RAM and I just I don't know I thought this was a little strange because this machine is from as far as I can tell except for maybe this card that was added is pretty much untouched from the stock configuration um, so these machines came from the factory with I believe 384 K of memory and that is what's currently installed on this machine but I just find that very odd because that's not a ton of memory to work with um, usually in my experience all the Tandy 1000s that I've come across um, they're always upgraded uh, max with the RAM so uh, from what I've, I've seen other people with Tandy 1000 SX's and I, I have one other one in storage and they've always been upgraded with the full uh, 640k it just seems like that was a super common upgrade that most people did was to upgrade to the full um, memory to 640k but this machine was stuck its whole life with the measly 384k of memory so we're also going to correct that that is definitely one of the first upgrades we're going to do is max this thing out now funny thing with Tandy 1000s at least from my research is uh, you generally don't want to go above uh, 640k for a minute I was considering uh, adding like a, a RAM expansion card for more memory uh, but from what I've read that's just something you don't want to do on a Tandy 1000 because it can create some incompatibilities with certain games and the thing with this machine is I, I really just want to use it for kind of like that early mid 80s area era and I really just want to use it on games that support like Tandy speaker sound and then Tandy uh, graphics uh, so you know all those games pretty much all of them are not going to require more than 640k of RAM anyways so they're even if I didn't care about the incompatibility issues that may arise it would be completely and utterly pointless for me to add more memory to this machine um, and that probably goes for most of you out there that pick up a Tandy 1000 or 1000 SX so at this point I'm just gonna do kind of three upgrades and uh, we'll see how it goes so the first two upgrades we're going to do is, of course, the math coprocessor. So this is the 8087 math coprocessor. So I'm going to install this. And then next we're going to, uh, hopefully this RAM is compatible, um, but we'll be upgrading the system memory to 640K. Uh, so that should bring it to its max. So these are two nice little uh, upgrades. Another upgrade you can do if you want is you can upgrade the CPU to a V20 which is a little bit faster uh, but I'm not going to do that uh, it generally is a great upgrade um, it, it maybe it's probably like 99 percent compatible I think like a version of load runner is the only game that you might run into issues if you upgrade to a v20 but generally it's a it's a sort of a suggested upgrade if you want to eke out a little more CPU power but I'm not going to do that upgrade I kinda have a reason and I think I'm going to save that for another video uh, but for right now we're going to do uh, these two upgrades now the other upgrade I wanted to do was to add a hard disk to this machine now generally I am very 
much sort of a purist and old school. So my first thought is, well, let's throw in some kind of MFM drive or RLL or even like SCSI. You know, the 8-bit slots do make upgrading uh, with a hard drive a little bit difficult. Um, at least for like, uh, you know, if you can have an 8-bit SCSI card or something like that. But it does make things a little bit more complicated. And also there's, there's actually no place to mount a hard drive. So probably if you wanted to go the old school route, uh, you probably would want to go for like a hard card that installs in one of those slots. Uh, but I don't have any of those. And you know, I, I think for this, this upgrade, I, I'm just going to go with new school. And I am going to use one of these uh, compact flash. 8-bit uh, adapters. Um, this one is designed specifically to use a compact flash. And I even, I was originally going to go with uh, MS-DOS 3.3 uh, on here as the OS, but I figured, you know, if I'm going with a compact flash card anyways, uh, I don't really need to go with, with DOS 3.3 because I have had no shortage of difficulties <laughs> with getting DOS 3.3 uh, bootable. Um, there's guides out there. Someone did a really good video on YouTube about that, but uh, I've, I've just had no end of trouble doing that. And then, of course, the other big upgrade I want to do is I want to change out one of these 360K floppy drives uh, for a 720K 3.5-inch uh, floppy drive. So here I have the little the bay adapter with the screws and the, the power adapter and everything. So... Um, I'll just need to find a suitable floppy drive and uh, get that all installed. Of course, um, this was sourced from China, so it's probably not original. Um, but who cares, because <laughs> the, the, uh, the, I don't know if you want to call them clones or just uh, reproductions or whatever you want to call these things, they seem to work and run just as well as the originals, so uh, not too concerned with that. But... We're going to install this guy. Now, there are some jumpers here, and there's a jumper there and somewhere else. So, uh, I am a little concerned that maybe installing this, I have to remove some jumpers to get it to detect, but I'm not sure. So, after I install everything, I'm going to have to uh, double check if I have to mess around with any jumpers to get these things detected. All right, so I have the coprocessor installed, and I have installed the extra memory chips. It should give me the 640K total, uh, although I don't really have much confidence in this for some reason. I feel like I'm missing a jumper or something, um, but I'm just going to power it up. I, I haven't done anything except put in, install the new memory and uh, the 8087, and uh, I'm just going to power it on and see if it does anything different. Okay. I'm going to look at this screen here, and we should get something. Hmm, that's not good. I'm not getting anything. So that is no bueno. Okay, so something is off. All right, so I will try to figure this out, and then I will get back to you guys. Okay, so yeah, apparently I do need to remove two jumpers. I need to remove that jumper there, so this uh, 8087 will be detected. And if uh, we are using the full 640K, which we are now, we want to remove that jumper right there. Um, there also is a switch block right here I will quickly talk about, um, if I can focus. So generally you want to leave these switches all in the on position. Um, but what they turn off, and I believe this is the correct order, is the video, in case you want to add a uh, discrete video card. Uh, I believe the next one is the IRQ for the video. The next one is the floppy drive controller, if you want to add a, a floppy controller card. And the last one is uh, the parallel port, disables or enables the parallel port. Generally, you're probably going to be leave, leaving those alone now. So I'm going to remove these jumpers and see if anything happens. All right, and now we are getting memory size 640K. So, so far, it uh, looks like it's working. So it looks like the issue was with those jumpers. All right, and now what I want to do is see if we can install that compact flash hard drive. Um, so I've just installed it right here. It should be pre-set up to boot to DOS 5.0. Uh, uh, hopefully, <laughs> I did that all correctly. 
Um, so I am just going to power it up, and then we'll uh, hopefully it will just boot to that uh, compact flash hard drive. So again, 640K, that's good. That's a, that's really just like a standard upgrade you want to do. Um, 640. It really opens up a lot of possibilities with with games and so on and so forth. All right, so it should should try to get into that hard drive in a minute. Here we go. Uh, I don't like that it didn't see it. Uh, boot sector not found. Of course not. It can't be easy. Um, I would like to reiterate that I did just have this in another machine and it booted to the OS without any issues. Um, but of course here it's just not gonna work. So that's just, ah, wonderful. So now that uh, XT IDE card I have there, it did come with its own compact flash card, uh, which does work. If you look here, it does boot up to DOS uh, 6.22, which is a little newer than I would like for this machine. I really wanted to go with a little bit older OS, like uh, DOS 5.0, but it, it does work. The included compact flash card does work, although uh, it, it boots up to the OS, but there's actually no DOS file on here so there's nothing like uh, you know like I I mean there it is I ran the uh, the dir command but I can't really do anything like edit it's just not there or F disk it's just there's nothing there it just <laughs> it boots up to the hard drive I can install programs to the hard drive but there's actually no like DOS folder on there um, I guess I could add it um, but I don't know. I might try. Uh, I might ins try to install the um, three and a half inch drive, and then uh, give it another try with that other card. See if I get DOS 5 installed. Because I I don't know. I just really want DOS uh, 5.0 on here. All right. Now, in order to install our uh, three and a half inch uh, floppy drive, um, it, it's not quite as easy as just installing it. And thanks to V Westlife's video uh, he did a while back on upgrading his Tandy 1000 SX. Hopefully he saved me a lot of trouble here in figuring this stuff out. So um, the first problem we're going to figure out is um, even with the adapter, uh, since the uh, three and a half inch floppy drives use the pin connector, um, where the cable on the Tandy it has uh, it's for the edge. It's really set up for the drives with edge connectors. We can get an adapter, but the cable's still not going to reach. So uh, we're going to need to replace it with a longer cable. Um, now, unfortunately, on the Tandy 1000, it uses kind of the original way that these uh, floppy drive cables worked, which is no twist. Um, so this twist was kind of an IBM thing that they did, mostly for the cable being able to detect kind of like A and B drive. Uh, that designates the difference. Now, before this, uh, the original spec with how these cables were, uh, you'd have jumpers on the floppy drive that you have to set. Well, the Tandy 1000 SX is kind of set up that way, so what we have to do is modify this cable here and get rid of the twist. What a twist! Uh, it seems like a really easy thing to do, but for some reason I'm kind of nervous about it, because <laughs> I, I don't know, I, just, I think I just have to pop uh, this part off and then untwist this and, and pull it up a little bit and then clamp it back down. Uh, I think that that should be all I have to do, and then hopefully it should work. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to do that, and then we'll see. And I'm pretty sure I have a couple floppy drive, actually, uh, three and a half inch drives that have that have jumpers for selecting, like, A or B. I believe it's designated uh, D0 or DF0 and D1. So I'll have to go in the back uh, room there and uh, take a look if I can dig out some of those drives. But... Yeah, I'm going to have to modify this cable here, so we'll see how that turns out. I did get excited for a minute because I thought, like, maybe I don't have to do this modification because in my stash of floppy cables, I did find this one that has no twist. Um, but uh, on one end, it's kind of like normal, what you'd expect. But then it has this connector, but it's not what you'd expect. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, you would expect a little, like, a... Uh, well, I don't know what the connector is called, but it's for the uh, edge connector that the uh, five and a quarter inch drives usually used. But this one's like pins. It almost looks like uh, like reverse. Is it the same? Hold on. Sorry, it's this. It's bigger than that. I don't. I don't know what that was meant to connect to, but 
Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna mo try to modify this cable, which theoretically shouldn't be hard. Uh, the color scheme with this mat kind of matches the Tenu 1000 SX anyways, because I think the stock cable was this sort of light gray connectors, as opposed to black. Not that, that matters to anybody, seeing it's inside the case. Alright, so it looks pretty good. I mean, I had to, it's a little like taunt here, uh, because I, you know, that's where it originally was. I had to pull it forward some, but it looks nice and, you know, flush, I guess. Uh, so, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if it works. Alright, and here's some examples of some uh, three and a half inch drives that have jumpers. If you can see right there, there's some jumpers. And you've got the little jumper guide right there. There's like uh, DS0 and 1 and so on and so forth. And then here's another one. These jumpers are right there. Um, I think that's the jumper guide there. So, yeah, I, I haven't checked these yet. This is a model uh, FD, what, 20... Two, this is a model FD235HF. Uh, um... This one's an FC357. Uh, I haven't checked these models yet, so I'm not exactly sure what types of drives these are. Um, I think I have a couple Amiga drives tossed in with these. So I think I have a couple non-standard drives mixed in, so I, I don't know. I'm going to have to check the model numbers just to make sure these are like IBM compatible. Uh, or, you know, if there's anything weird about them. So, I'll have to check that. But that's what I meant by uh, needing uh, jumpers, a drive with jumpers, um, if you're going to put one of these guys in a Tandy 1000 SX. And here's with that uh, little caddy with the floppy drives uh, removed. you got to take out several of these annoying screws. One of them gave me a lot of trouble. Um, Hate when that happens but it, it came out all right and then um this is what we have under it again no idea what those chips do um there's the rest of our ram this is the ram that was originally installed in it um so yeah hopefully i can get this guy installed here and uh hopefully we can get it working all right well excuse the mess on the bed work bench thing here but um, I've got a couple things going on here so anyways yeah the uh, little cable experiment should have been easy uh, failed um, it just no matter how I set it I just keep getting like read error. it won't boot from any disk I just keep getting errors um, so this just isn't working I tried another one it's just just not working I don't know what I'm doing wrong here with this or maybe it's just bad luck um, I tried several drives, it, it just, I just can't get it to work for some reason. Um, and even worse yet, when I tried to go back to how I had it set up before with the two um, five and a quarter inch drives and the original Tandy cable, in, uh, in messing around with that Tandy cable and hooking things in, I think I popped out one of the little pins in it. I have it away right now so I can't show you. So, um... It's acting weird now, so even the original cable, unfortunately I was acting weird on me. Um, it won't, like if I have a floppy in it, when it boots up, it won't read it, like it won't boot into the, the OS on the floppy disk, if that makes any sense to you guys. I don't know if I'm articulating that uh, well. Um, now, when I, if I uh, get into the hard drive, if I boot from the hard drive, then I can access the disk um, from, the, uh, from DOS. But I don't know what that is going on. There, there could cause some, you know, issues if I try to play a game on it. It might work fine for a while, and then it tries to read the disc a certain way, and it it fails or corrupts. I don't know. So here's the thing. Um, as I get older, I kind of find myself. I, I know some people are gonna poo-poo this, but it's not that I don't like troubleshooting these old machines. Obviously, I do to a degree. But as I age and get older, I find myself just wanting things to work. Um, I, I'm growing a little bit tired of a 30 minutes uh, in and out sort of operation and an old PC turns into five hours of frustration. Now that is the nature of the game with retro computers, but as I said, as I get older, I just find myself enjoying that part of it a little bit less. 
and especially lately where I've kind of had a string of projects where it really hasn't gone 100% um, and there's always been some little kink in, in the build um, and that's okay that's expected but you know after a series that I was just I was just tired um, <laughs> I was just tired of it so I, I went the easy way out and uh, I went on like um, and I went online and I, I just kind of asked hey I'll, I'll pay money um, could someone just make me one of these cables and, and I'll even buy like a drive just just give me a pre-made setup that's that's confirmed tested and working and I'll pay uh, for the convenience now thankfully uh, V Westlife answered my plea so if you haven't seen his channel look it up uh, excellent channel uh, far outstrips my channel just 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 a great channel but anyways he uh, answered my plea and uh, he has a Tandy 1000 SL and that's what we're looking at here so he said he had this machine and um, it actually doesn't work anymore he said the motherboard was dead and he would he would either send me the cable and the drives um, or if I wanted I could just he could send the whole machine so I opted for the whole machine now he did tell me well ahead of time that this thing doesn't work uh, something's wrong with the motherboard now if he couldn't fix it I mean I'm not gonna be able to his uh, abilities with these old machines is um, better than mine so I don't really have hope of fixing this thing but I don't know I thought it'd be cool I've come across weirder things in my uh, PC retro collecting adventure so maybe I'll come across a, uh, a, a motherboard uh, that works or maybe I'll come across a machine where that's cosmetically just trashed but internally it works so you know I figured I may as well go for the whole shebang in this instant um, now it works a little bit different on this machine whereas I believe power is sent through the cables but uh, he assured me it should still work with the 1000 SX um, here's the the main drive this is like the original drive and then here's his uh, 720k and he does have a little you can see it there a little adapter cable we'll, we'll get a better look out of it that comes off and in here um, so I'm just gonna pull this um, I'm just going to kind of pull this and transplant it into the 1000SX. I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to do a straight transplant. Um, I think I'm even going to keep the orientation. I, originally, I kind of wanted the 720K drive to be the A drive. You know, but the more I think about it, these machines are really meant for, for this kind of type of drive to be the A drive. So, I, I you know, I'm 100% fine with just keeping this as the B drive. Uh, it might actually work out better if this is the B drive. Uh, so... That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pull this and just directly transplant it to the SX. And let's uh, hope it, it works. Um, but while this machine is out, uh, I'm going to power it up just to show you guys what it's doing. I didn't talk to him too much about the issue. He just said that the motherboard is dead. Um, so I have it all hooked up. So I'm going to hit power. Well, the power is right here. And this is what it does. You get like a solid light and that n screechy noise. Now I can turn the volume. Volume still works. But hey, if, if anyone happens to know, uh, like, hey, I know what that issue is. It's kind of a quick and easy fix. Um, let me know. It would be cool to get this thing running. Although, like I said, if he didn't get it running, uh, and I'm sure he researched the issue, uh, I am probably sure as hell not going to. But hey, who knows? Um, so okay, so I'm going to transplant these drives and then I'll get back to you guys. I'd also like to add he threw in this nice little Radio Shack uh, magazine from I think 1983 I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. I mean, I love this stuff. Because <laughs> like, I, I mean, I remember when Tandy actually had uh, computers in their store. Uh, I mean, not a whole lot. I mean, I was a real little kid in, in almost all of the 80s. Um, so, you know, most of my good developed memories are from the 90s, early 90s and up. Uh, but I do, I do recall the wonderful, wacky uh, 1980s. So this is really cool. So thank you for throwing that in as a little, little bonus. Okay, so here's the cable he had in there removed. Um, you see those, like, holes there? He says that shouldn't affect anything. Those are just uh, for grounding. Um, so it still should work just fine, even though there's little holes in there. And that's going to be for the A drive, just our standard, what, 360K, uh, 5 and a quarter inch drive. And then this is going to be for our drive B, which is going to be the 720K drive. And it's this, uh, it's like a weird little 
little adapter extension. This, this should work. Uh, this should work well. So hopefully I'll just put this in and then put the drives in the SX and hopefully it should uh, it should work just fine for us. So very quick update on the Tandy 1000 SL um, that I got so I could do the uh, floppy drive swap which was completely successful. Um, so when we power this guy up it just makes this continuous irritating um, sound. So I got some more details about the issue and um, apparently what I found out Adrian from Adrian's Digital Basement also had a very similar problem with one of his Tandys and it appears the issue was like a bad custom chip on the motherboard. Um, so it is likely that maybe that's the same problem with this one, um, that one of the custom chips on the motherboard has just gone bad and needs replaced. Um, unfortunately I'm not really great with a multimeter and poking around the motherboard. Uh, you know, I may uh, brush up on that and try to poke around and, and see if I could find maybe a chip that's having an issue. Um, but, of course, replacing it um, is also going to be an issue, if, even if I do find the chip that's possibly the problem. Um, getting a replacement could be an issue. Apparently, there is a company in the UK that bought out Tandy's stock at some point of its, you know, custom uh, chips. And, um, I don't know, I might be able to try to contact them. But when I did talk to V Westlife on that, he had previously tried to contact them and never heard back from them. So don't know if I'll have any uh, better luck with them. But uh, I guess we'll see. And if uh, I do have luck, I guess maybe this guy will be a future video. We'll see. Um, and I think I'm also going to be adding a sound card to this machine. Uh, it's a Sound Blaster 2.0 with the Creative Music System chips here. It's a CT1350B. Um, now, I am primarily going to use this machine for uh, games that really use the Tandy sound and video. Uh, you know, if it sounds best with uh, Tandy sound, is it like the best option, or Tandy video is the best option. Um, although I want to add this card because, um, you know, just to give me some more flexibility and uh, in case there's a game that maybe looks best with, uh, what does, like, Tandy Video is maybe its best option for a video, but maybe it does support AdLib or uh, something early like the Creative Music System uh, or maybe uses digital sound effects. So uh, I think this adds some versatility to the machine, so um, that's why I am adding this sound card. All right, so pretty sparse with these slots here. I think one other upgrade I'm going to put in here is I'm going to find a, I don't have one right now, but I'm going to have to dig out um, a serial card, probably that one that was in here earlier. Um, and um, that's mostly for using a serial mouse. Now you can use uh, like a Tandy color computer mouse on these machines, I believe, with these uh, front joystick ports. But I believe um, using those, the CPU is constantly checking those. Uh, so, from what I've read, I believe using like a Tandy color mouse um, with those joystick ports uh, slows the CPU down a little bit. So, uh, we, we'll just do better with a serial uh, mouse. It will help uh, take some load off the CPU. Alright, so we should be about ready to uh, set this guy up and, and play some games and see how it works. I really don't like that hole there. It's not that big of a deal, but if I do come across another serial card uh, between now and then, I might replace this one just because that little hole bothers me. But um, there is at least one other sort of major upgrade I want to do with this machine, but uh, that's actually kind of maybe best left as the subject of a, a follow-up video, so I'm going to hold off on that upgrade for now, and uh, we're just going to take a look at this guy uh, as it is. So another addition to my little Tandy setup here is this a uh, Tandy power switching system. Now I picked this up at a thrift store for a few bucks, and you know it's basically one of those things where there's a bunch of plugs in the back, and you uh, connect everything in, and it you know it's like a master power switch. It, it also sits the spike protector. Um, so you know I don't know how reliable it is, especially being so old, but you know it cuts down on the number of. Uh, outlets I need to plug into because I can just plug this guy into the, the wall outlet and then I can plug the monitor and PC and whatever else into it. It has a little swivel thing at the bottom although the monitor is too heavy it doesn't really swivel well at all. <laughs> um, but I, I like how it's Tandy branded um, so that's pretty cool. In the future um, they make a little uh, like a speaker 
uh, system that goes under, uh, like under the monitor too, kind of like this, but with speakers on the side. Um, that would be interesting to pick up one of those too. It will save me from having speakers on the on the sides if if I go that route. Um, but I don't know. That might make it too tall uh, with the monitor up there. I I don't know yet. But yeah, that, I just wanted to show you guys that was pretty cool. One thing worth mentioning that these kind of generic uh, 8088s have sometimes is an actual turbo button. Um, so I can actually hit this switch to change uh, pretty much at any time between regular and turbo. So for the in the case of this motherboard, uh, it's 4.77, and then I can hit that, and it will it actually does what it says here. It, it turbo boosts it up to 10 uh, megahertz. Now the problem with the Tandy. 1000 SX and um, other computers too is sometimes they don't have a turbo button or turbo switch um, so there's no way to engage that here um, now normally what you do on these machines is uh, there's a mode command and so when you're in DOS you can hit mode fast or mode slow and that will change the speed um, now unfortunately that command is seems to be kind of tied to Tandy DOS, I think 3.2 and maybe 3.3. So if you're using something like me in this case where you've got DOS.622, uh, th that mode command is gone. And I, I, I tried to look it up and I don't think there's a way you can actually take it from older versions and like put it in newer versions of DOS. So if you upgrade from Tandy DOS, you lose that ability. But there is one other thing you can do. If you have a uh, Tandy keyboard, uh, when you boot up, you can hit, I believe it's F3, and that will put it into slow mode. So it's fast mode by default. I believe with the Tandy 1000 SX, it's like 7.16 megahertz. Um, but just hit this once during the booting process, and it will switch it to slow mode, 4.77 megahertz. Another interesting thing I found out is you can actually, uh, with the F4, you can actually change the boot drive, which is nice. So if you want to boot from uh, your 720K floppy drive instead of the 360K, uh, you can do that and it will switch the boot drive. And that's, that's very handy. I don't know if, if most of like, these uh, regular sort of generic IBM compatibles can do that, if there's a command or a special program, but... Um, I mean, other than maybe going to the BIOS and changing things, but yeah, that's that's pretty neat. So, um, if you're wondering about the the speed thing, and you know you've upgraded DOS on your Tandy 1000, um, there is a way on boot to change it. Now, I believe you're you're stuck with it. Uh, you're gonna have to reset um, if you want to go back to fast mode. The, reset the whole computer. So after a lot of consideration with this machine about. Uh, you know, hard drives and um, MS-DOS versions and stuff. I, I think I am going to go with DOS 6.22 uh, just because just because it's, it's, it's easy. Um, but also, you know, I, I, I wanted to go authentic at first. I was talking, I wanted to have a 32 megabyte uh, drive and I wanted to use something like DOS 3.3 to be more kind of period correct. But you know what, if, if I'm already using a CF card as a hard drive, am I really being all that period correct anyways? So I, I think I will keep the 64 megabytes. Um, that's, that's a lot of extra. That's like double the space of, the, you know, the 32 that I would be limited with with uh, DOS uh, 3.3. So that will come in handy. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to keep DOS 6.22 on this 64 megabyte compact flash drive. So, uh, yeah, uh, I've already set up, I have the set blaster because I did put that uh, early sound blaster in there. Uh, so let's look at some games.
All right, so here's Thexter. Thexter is a game that plays real well on the Tandy 1000 because I believe sound-wise it only has PC speaker and Tandy 3-channel speaker, and the Tandy uh, sound is it's much better than the PC version. Um, this is also a game where uh, it, it will only run the Tandy sound if you play it in Tandy video mode because it does support a couple video modes like CGA, uh, Tandy, 16 color mode, and EGA. Uh, if you play it in EGA, you get PC speaker. Uh, I don't know if there's a way around that. Um, the EG mode is a little bit higher resolution, but I don't. It, it looks a little weird to me. I I just prefer this game with the Tandy color uh, and definitely with the Tandy sound, which you need to be playing in Tandy uh, color mode for that. So here's Iron Man Super Off-Road Racer. This is interesting. Obviously, here it supports Tandy uh, 16 color mode. It also supports two EGA modes, one being 64 color if you're using an EGA monitor. Very interesting. I'm going to show this working uh, pretty quickly here. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to use my ad lib for this just to show the, uh, the sound card that I installed there working. So uh, the first clip is going to be ad lib. Uh, coming from the sound card I installed, and then I'm actually going to play the game uh, just working off PC speaker. Um, I don't think this game supports Tandy, uh, the Tandy sound. I think this only supports PC speaker. And so Arctic Fox is another interesting game because I believe this game only supports 16 color mode with Tandy. Now that it has a CGA mode, which we're going to look at right now. Um, so this is Arctic Fox in its CGA mode, which will play fine on the uh, Tandy 1000 uh, SX. Um, but it also has a, a 16 color mode um, that it, it only has a Tandy 16 color mode. So there's no like EGA mode with this game. So if you want to play the uh, enhanced 16 color mode, you're going to have to play it on a Tandy 1000 uh, machine that supports Tandy video. Um, I, I, there might be some patch out there somewhere. I, I doubt it. I haven't seen anything. So as far as I know, if you want 16 color, you gotta play Arctic Fox on a Tandy 1000. And then the last game I'm going to show here is Planet X3, and we're going to play it in the Tandy 16 color video mode. And uh, for sound, we're going to use the Tandy slash uh, PC Junior sound.
So now back to the original question we asked at the beginning of this video and that others have stated. Is the Tani 1000 SX kind of the ultimate uh, PC IBM compatible for the 80s? Uh, specifically when you're looking for those early games uh, that you need an 8088, uh, you know, in that era. And I would say yes. Uh, it, it's just that it's all about that Tandy sound and graphics. It's just, it really gives this machine, uh, I guess, a lot of, of, of clout. And at the time, it was a lot of value. Uh, it was practically, you know, like EGA almost, uh, just lower resolution with that Tandy graphics. And, and, a, and an EGA card, it, you know, to buy one of those and put them in, a, in an IBM compatible, uh, that would have been pretty pricey. Um, so you did, I think you got a lot of value with this machine. Um, so that also leaves the question of what am I going to do with my Tandy 1000 SX? Will it be replacing my kind of uh, ultimate uh, 8088 PC that I have here that's extremely yellowed? And you know what? I think I will replace this guy. I mean, for one, the Tandy's lighter and it, it will take up a smaller, uh, it has a smaller footprint. Um, and room's a premium here, and although it's not much, I think it'll make a difference, especially if I want to put, like, speakers on the side. It's just, it will just be a little bit uh, less space that the Tandy takes up. And I will be using this monitor. Uh, I like this monitor more, and it's a little bit better uh, condition um, than the other Tandy monitor I have. So, uh, I, I think so. Now, this, this machine still has uh, some advantages. It, overall, I think it's a little bit more compatible. Um, I think you can run a little bit more programs on this. The The turbo button goes up to 10 megahertz instead of, I think, like 7.16 or something like that on the Tandy. But if I, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm going <laughs> to use that. To, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. And if, if I have a game that's just running too slow on like a 7 megahertz, uh, you know, speed bump on an 808, I'm just going to play it on a 286 or a 386. So that doesn't really bother me too much. Uh, this does also have a little edge in memory. I have a like two megabyte memory card in there, and I have that high memory card to let me use like upper memory. Um, in the '80s, those would have been like ridiculous luxuries in an 8088. Really, no game that would run well on this machine needs that. Um, I know the Tandy has a little bit of problems if you if you try to add more memory than the 640k. Uh, so I guess if I wanted to run like if I want to do a ridiculous build where I was running programs uh, that were like programs you wouldn't really see running on an 8088, I, I might choose this one um, because it has all that extra memory. But in practical use, I, I'm never going to use the extra memory in this thing. So uh, yeah, not, strike there too. Um, and I guess maybe the last thing is it has a CGA card in there. Um, and the CGA card is probably a little bit more compatible than, than the CGA abilities of the Tandy 1000. Uh, it also has composite out. Um, now the Tandy 1000 SX also has a composite out, but they're very slightly different. And, and with certain games you'll get incorrect colors through composite on the Tandy 1000 SX. But I'm going to be using that uh, CM5 and hopefully one day a CM11 monitor. So I'm not going to really be using the composite out, so that's not really going to be an issue either. And as for all the extra modes that the CGA card does, like the Plantronics and all that stuff, it's I'm really not going to be playing games that use those modes, really. So it, I think it comes down to the Tandy. It's just that TGA graphics and the, the extra sound uh, with the Tandy audio, with that uh, three-channel speaker ability. There's just a ton of games that support it. Um, and I'm just going to use that. I'm just going to find myself using the abilities of this computer way more than the other. My, my, what's formerly kind of like my main 8088 PC, uh, that, that Tandy, there's a lot of games that just, that maybe don't support EGA and VGA, but support Tandy graphics, uh, mode, or that, you know, maybe the best sound, uh, is the, the Tandy audio. I, I think I'm just going to get a way more usage out of those, uh, abilities than the extra memory or the correct colors from composite out uh, on the uh, on that guy. So yeah, I think I will be replacing that. I think this Tandy 1000 SX will become my main 8088 machine. So yeah, I'm really happy with how this uh, this guy came out. So yeah, I'm very happy with this machine. Um, 
I think I'm going to get a lot of good use out of it. Uh, I, I'm not going to get rid of my other 8080. I'm, I'm going to keep it as a, you know, my backup. Maybe it will come in handy if I want to play around uh, with that extra memory or things like that. I, I don't know, but I, I will be definitely keeping that machine around. But this is going to be my main. This is going to be the flagship, I think, of the 8088 fleet. Um, so thank you for watching. If you like this kind of content, subscribe. Uh, be sure to comment. Um, I know a lot of you guys out there were Tandy guys back in the day, uh, so if you have any other suggestions for this machine, let me know, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. What a twist!